Joining us now on the phone line is a, a legal analyst, attorney, all-around good gal. Jonna Spillbore is with us. Hello, Jonna. How are you? Good morning, Brian. Thank you for that introduction. I'm fantastic. All right. So I want to start off by talking about the marijuana bill that's being considered here in the District of Columbia. Depending on how you look at it, it still has a ways to go before it becomes law. But the initial vote was 11 to 1, mm -hmm. and they, they did something interesting. They either, depending on how you look at it, either watered the bill down or they strengthened the bill. Uh, they decided that public smoking of marijuana would still be a criminal offense. Offense. But here's my question. We, we have many places that are saying, okay, we're going to decriminalize, in some cases, legalize pot. But, but the federal laws are still, still categorize pot as an illegal substance. How do, you, how, do you, how do you you work with something like that where on a local level it's legal, but on a federal level still frowned upon? Right. Well, the feds came out when, uh, prior to, to this enactment, the feds came out when other states started to quote unquote legalized marijuana and said you know what we're not going to to uh, prosecute anybody within the states that are legalizing it. we're going to leave you guys alone we're going to let the states do what they want with uh, legalizing or decriminalizing marijuana and now t today as far as dc is concerned the feds are pretty much saying the same thing which is in stark contrast i don't know if you guys remember back when the district wanted to uh... legalize medical marijuana Congress and the feds were, like, very opposed and very vocal about it. Now, fast forward, you know, 15 years or so, and the feds are saying, mm, we're not going to take a position. That's not a ringing endorsement, but it may as well be. Yeah, but, I mean, there's still moments where it can come in conflict with federal law. For example, you go to D.C. and you, you've got some pot, but you can't take it to the airport. Oh, no, certainly not. So if you were to do something like that, if you're on federal territory and you're violating federal drug laws, you will get busted, even if you're within a state where it's legal, because that's, now you're on the federal turf as opposed to the state turf. Yeah. So, yes, is there a chance that even if you're within a state where it's legal, you're at an airport, you're at a border checkpoint, you know, a post office, could you get arrested? Absolutely. Uh, Jonna Spillboard is a guest. Of course, check her out at jonaspillboard.com. That's Jonna with two N's, by the way. Don't use the European spelling. Uh, Jonna, watching the story of Philip Seymour Hoffman, which started out, obviously, this weekend as a tragic drug overdose, but suddenly last night it's become a criminal case. Police in New York arrested four drug dealers, and uh, is there any chance that they could be held in some way criminally responsible for the death of, of uh, this actor? I think prosecutors are going to die trying to prosecute these four people in some respect for the death of Philip Seymour Hoffman. And here's where I think they want to go. If they can prove, obviously, that these four people uh, sold the drugs to, to Philip Seymour Hoffman, they would obviously charge them with the, with the sale and perhaps illegal possession. But I think they want to take it a step uh, further. I think they want to somehow prosecute any of those four people for the manslaughter of Philip Seymour Hoffman. That would be, I think, unprecedented, but I, I also believe you can make a case for that. Wow. Well, how do you make that case? I'm sorry. All right, so listen. So the definition of manslaughter is basically having a reckless disregard for human life. Now, I don't know a whole lot about drug dealing, but I'm going to presume that Philip Seymour Hoffman probably didn't have multiple drug dealers that he was buying from. I think usually if you're uh, addicted to drugs, you find a source or two that you uh, trust and you purchase your drugs from them, which would mean that these people, or maybe a few of them, knew that Philip Seymour Hoffman had a drug problem. Heroin is a serious drug. If you're selling regularly to somebody who has a problem, to me, I think you can make a case for reckless disregard for human life that that the death of Philip Seymour Hoffman was likely to occur. And, and, and I don't necessarily disagree with that. However, you could make that case for every heroin dealer from the beginning of, of the invention of heroin. Uh, aren't the New York Police Department under scrutiny here for treating this separately or differently in, in, in a special way because it's an Oscar-winning actor? I mean, what about all of the people who have died from an overdose in some you know, unknown anonymous apartment in the Bronx? They don't get this kind of attention. You're absolutely right, and that's a great point. But I think the difference is we don't normally have this kind of evidence in support of who supplied uh, an illegal drug to somebody who later died. I mean, we've got four guys on tape. I think when you're in, in, in an apartment someplace unknown where there's no cameras running, 
people are selling heroin and dying from heroin all the time, and there's no way to prove where they got the drugs from. That's the difference, not so much that Philip Seymour Hoffman was a world-famous actor. We got this uh, other case that's uh, is sort of uh, the talk of the town right now. A guy dies on a street corner directly across the street from the fire department. The fire department doesn't come. Uh, the family of the man who died... Uh, is going to hold a press conference. They're represented by the the Johnny Cochran firm here in the D.C. area. Uh, and, and do they have a case in a situation like that? Brian, I have to be honest with you. This case incensed me when I read about it, and it still does. They absolutely have a case. I, there is no way that the fire department is going to escape liability for failing to render aid to a man who was within shouting distance of the firehouse, number one. Number two... The story, as the investigation is unfolding, it absolutely makes no sense. It's almost as if there was a, that they intentionally ignored the pleas for help, as opposed to hiding behind some protocol that I believe didn't exist in the first place. So will they, get, will they be sued? Yes. Will they lose? Yes. No. Wait, why do you think they'll lose? Because there's two excuses that the, the fire department has put forth so far. One is... Well, I'm sorry we couldn't render aid, but protocol dictates that you have to call 911. That is simply untrue. Why do we know it's untrue? Because the ambulance that did render aid, uh, aid was flagged down. There wasn't a 911 call. It was flagged down. So there goes that excuse. And number two, you see a person in need of help across the street, and you ignore the pleas for help? Yeah. To me, that's per se per se, negligence on the part of the department. John S. Bilber, you know I, I love it when you throw Latin down here, so, <laughs> so you can do that anytime you want. Uh, last question, the other burning legal issue of our time. Should Justin Bieber be deported? Oh, my goodness. You know, <laughs> Justin Bieber needs to be slapped a little bit, but no, he shouldn't be deported. He makes a lot of money for the United States. Does he need some help before this, his problem gets worse? Absolutely. Oh, but hold on a minute now. So a migrant worker here from Mexico on a green card just making barely minimum wage, he uh, d gets dri driving under the influence. He's drag racing. Uh, because he's not making a lot of money for the country, he has to be deported, but Bieber stays? No, I think you can make a case to keep somebody who's, who's committed a minor crime in the country as well. But Bieber hasn't been convicted of anything yet, <laughs> yeah. number All one. Right. Number two, he's, he's really on a path. And, we got to try to help. I still say he should be deported for the haircut alone. Yeah, <laughs> just because. <laughs> no, John, stop that. Stop we it. want Jonna to come back. Hello, Jonna. Jonna, thank you so much for joining us. Always appreciated. And I will always come back. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. Stay uh, safe in this weird weather. Uh, yes, yeah, that's thank right. Thank you, you too. Thanks.